right. Hey, what's up, everybody? Joshua Casper here with Beatport and Plugin Boutique for another s studio secret session. And today is extra special because I'm joined by not one, but two music giants, Mark Knight and James F. Reynolds. Gentlemen, how are we doing today? Pretty good, thanks, Joshua. Good, how thank are you? <laughs> I'm all right. A little bit of a struggle getting this thing up and running today, but we're here. We should be live. Let us know in the chat if you can hear us loud and clear. And uh, James and Mark, can you just start by giving us sort of an introduction to who you are and kind of how you know each other? Like, where's the relationship come from between the two of you? Wow. Uh, well, <laughs> you guys may know me uh, for making one or two records and sort of running around the world, putting them on at the weekend. Um, and obviously touring records where we are, are now. Uh, that's me. Um, James, I'll let you. Um, yeah, I've just been sort of helping people make records as a mixer and producer for the last 25 odd years. So, you know, works with everyone, including Mark. I guess that's how we know yeah. each other, right? And yeah, I, I kind of crossover is more in the pop world, isn't it? Uh, yeah. That's yeah, where yeah. We, we've worked together a lot. Um, so dance know. crossover kind of vibes. Yeah, we've, we've produced yeah. records and written records for Calvin Harris, T uh, Tiny Temper, yeah. Flo Rida. Pop. Icona. Icona. It goes on and on. But yeah, we kind of interface and you know, we've been mates for years and years and years. But that's our kind of touch point, really. When I'm doing the kind of more, uh, um, undercover is the wrong word, uh, the, the, the kind of more product, uh, pop production stuff, we, you know, we're very much a team in that world, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I think I, I started in dance um, and made a lot of house records for a lot of years, you know, behind the scenes um, and then moved over into the, kind of dance crossover world and you know work with you know shane cod and disciples and, and loads of loads of people who do those sort of more crossover -y records i suppose but um yeah it's good and, I to, mean, and to spare uh, spare james the blush his blush he's probably one of the best mixers in the world i mean thank you mate uh, mixed everyone from bts to bts BTS and back, <laughs> and back again. so yeah just split up it's quite a yeah, few bts credits on the mix. site well, they sadly weren't happy about the last yeah. album, sonically. That was a oh. ride. That was seven years from nothing to biggest band in the world. Hell yeah. of a ride. But um, yeah, K-pop is a whole new level of mixing. You're talking a 250 stems, stems which yeah. isn't quite the same as many, many is dance it, records. How many do you Not say? About 250 I've had at times. <laughs> What's happening? Like, why is it so yeah, many? I, I, well, because there's a lot of singers in BTS, so right. and then they're layered a lot. So you're talking maybe 150 channels of vocals, and then, you know, their production levels are, you know, insane. They 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 tend to layer a lot and get you know. And 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 the thing about a K-pop record is it is a, it's an amalgamation of hip hop and dance and and R and B all in one record. So you're not kind of getting fixed parts and then they're sort of coming in and out through the, the period of its life. It suddenly goes to a whole new section, which is a whole new song almost in itself. So yeah, you end up, you know, usually I, I mix a record in a day, uh, BTS record, no, two days at least, you know, just even just deep breathing and nuancing and tuning and stuff like that. So yeah, it's a long job. It's but old. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's, that, that's us. That's how we know each other. Yeah. Um, and we decided to kind of further our relationship and our endeavors into something a bit deeper and a bit more involved. Mm -hmm. Which about is uh, two years ago. obviously a segue into what we're here to to talk about today, Indeed. which is the new plugin, yeah. Infinite. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell me yeah. sort of the progression of the idea, maybe who came up with it first, and how we got from that initial kind of yeah. aha moment to where we are now, where it's actually already been released and is available on Plugin Boutique. It was, it's a kind of amalgamation of ideas, having both spent the best part of 25 years in the studio doing the same things over and over on a loop. We wanted to speed up that process, you know. I think great plugins really um, streamline, streamline your, your yeah. workflow. You yeah. know, that's when, when you get a great plugin, it allows you to do that. And to stay focused on, on, on the main objective, that is production, you know. Um, I think in this day and age, when you have to wear all the hats, of producer, engineer, mixer, you know, it's it's about appropriating your time in the right way. So ultimately and ostensibly you get the end product right, which is the vibe of the record. Yeah. Um, and it's very easy to get waylaid and bogged down in the engineering aspect of it and lose sight of, of yeah. the goal. And that's making yeah. a great record. So all of these plug, you know, I think the best plugins are the, are the plugins that allow you that simplify and speed up that process. 
Yeah. Um, and, you know, we were probably doing something in the studio and in one of our long conversations, um, decided that, you know, there were certain aspects of production that we'd done over and over again. And is there a way to simplify and speed that up? Yeah. One being delay shots and really creative and interesting delay shots and throws that make, you know, your records that more. Yeah, not, not just a bog standard delay shot, not like it called a note or an eight note delay. But, you know, most people, both of us, for sure, you know, when we're doing a delay shot, we think about way more than just the delay shot. We want to put a bit of reverb on it possibly want to put an LFO after that yep. delay shot. Just stuff to keep it, A, bouncing in the rhythm of the track, but just make it a bit more interesting, possibly formant it. Yeah, yeah. Just, just to make it a bit more interesting, I suppose. So that was one aspect. And then yep. transitions, you know, something that's um, a big part of my productions, as you're aware, is making that drama, those moments in, um, in your records that really have an impact in, in situ, in clubs when you play them, that have that wow moment. Yeah. Um, and yeah. that usually is an involved process requiring a balancing act of a multitude of plugins, you know, reverb, delay, high pass, and so on and so on and so on. And, you know, you do this activation, this process, every single record yeah. three or four times. Mm. Uh, and it is a balancing act of all of these different plugins open at the same time and adjustments. And we thought, how could we condense all of that into something that was more streamlined and allowed you, as I say, to stay more focused on the end product, uh, which is making the record. Uh, and the idea of Infinite was born, really, wasn't it? I guess so. And I guess to add to that, um, you know, because as you'll come to find out when we demo the plugin later, there's two sides of the plugin. There's a very easy side where you turn the, the you know, the one wheel and, and then that's your effect there and there, then and there even. But, you know, what I thought was, and as Mark was touching on there, you know, when you're doing a right, you know, a build, you are putting a series of plugins together. So you're doing reverb, delay, LFO, or, you know, whatever your, everyone has their own thing and everyone yep. creates their buses and then they put, you know, these effects on those buses and they automate it. All and channels. Buses. Um, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. No, I'm joking. Yeah. It's an in joke. Yeah. Um, and... You know, and then you spend a bit of time automating that, getting your automation curves right on, on each of those things, you know, maybe intensifying the feedback on the delay. So after you've done that whole process, you've got a lot of stuff going on. And then the thought of having to do that every single time, I was like, surely there must be a way that we can create, still create these amazing effects. But once we've done it once, that's it. We save it and it's done. And then what we need to do the next time is turn on the one wheel and it's there anytime we want to use yeah. it. So you've suddenly saved yourself, you know, 15, 20 minutes worth of work just making those incredible builds. And that that was really the idea behind it, to give yeah. you control over your builds. And and yes, you will spend the first time if you want to go into the, the you know, the macro side, the programming side. You'll, the first time you use it, you'll spend time making that build that is your own. But then once you've done that once, you save that's it, it. And it's that's saved and, and it's yours and, and you, you you can then just use it, rinse and repeat, I suppose. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and as James said, you know, what, what we wanted to build into the, the USB is, is we wanted to talk to both ends of the spectrum in production. Yeah. You know, people at the, at the beginning of their sort of production career, uh, at, at the kind of more embryonic element of it, and then, you know, fully seasoned professionals. So th this plugin had the versatility to talk to both. You know, if you are um, starting out and you do, you know, want to, I wanted to fast track to that kind of really intense build, it's a case of picking a preset um, that you liked uh, and drawing one line of automation and all the, all the heavy lifting has been done. Yeah. Um, but on the other side, you can flip to the more complex element, get stuck into the macro um, element. There's a lot going on under the hood, really get stuck in fine tune. It. And as, as James said, save it. And, you know, and that is yours. That is your bespoke, your own uh, build that you can go back to and, and use over and over again. And look, we're not saying there aren't other products on the market that do this, but this really allows you to get in and it doesn't lock you out of the process. You can really get in and not sound like everyone else, sound unique, you know, and there's an, an infinite possibility. Well, well, that was a good word to use, mate. Just segue right into that. <laughs> it's like really, it was effortless. Like a true, really <laughs> 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 true radio professional. 
<laughs> Mark, I, I had a question from one of my colleagues, and I, in fact, yep. flagged it myself when I watched the intro video for Infinite, that some of the transition effects were actually inspired by the transitions in some of your older records. And I was just wondering if yep. you can give us maybe a few uh, examples of tracks that you used for inspiration on some of the presets. Well, that is exactly what we did. We kind of bottled up all the best moments, if that's the right phrase, of all the records done, I've done in the past and then turn them into presets. You know, so there's real time. Um, you know, we know these things worked in real time. So we, we kind of went back over a bit, a bunch of my old records. Go, OK, what did I do in that record? Right. Did that, that, that and that. OK, that's program that into Infinite and save that as a preset. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you and I. I suppose over the last eighteen months, most of the records that I made um, when this was in a real working state have been, you know, all the dramatic moments, uh, the build-ups, breakdowns, all of that have been used. You know, I've been made using Infinite. Um, so I've been road testing it using, it, and I know these things work. You know, I, I'm working on a record, then I'm playing it at a festival at the weekend, and I know that the drama's there. So. Now, that was the great advantage I had was to kind of refine, go out, do it, play a record, go, yeah, this really works, you know, come mm -hmm. back and all make the tra or changes as and when necessary. You know, we had that in our armory, that that, that flexibility and that, it, it, you know, real time in situ use of, of what we were trying to make here to go and test it and come back and refine it. And it, it's been a two year process. I mean, we've never done anything like this before, but James, it's, no, just, it's, it's like, it, it, let's have a go moment. It, it's quite interesting. Once you take that many effects, um, and try and make them all work together, you know, effortlessly. It's it's a lot of kind of uh, programming and thinking and going back and saying, okay, we need to tweet this and tweet that. And it was a it was a process. And and you know, I was the same. I was I've been road testing them in a lot of mixing. I've been doing for quite a few artists, and you know, it's it's always gone down really well. Mixes have worked. So you know, that's fantastic. Um, and I think the thing is as well, I mean, that you can use the plugin however you want to use it. It doesn't just have to be used for builds, does it? You can just use it for the pure effects and put it on a hi-hat channel just to create a bit more energy. We're using kind of subtle six notes delay, 16th note delay and a bit of distortion or something. Or, you know, because, which I'll get into later when I show you how you program the macro, you could create you know, an enormous sort of breakdown where the song winds down, then winds back up again using a filter over the duration of just turning that knob. So it doesn't have to go up or just down. It can do both over the duration of, you know, the automation yeah. that you draw on the knob, which I'll explain later. And like you say, what took time is that we wanted the individual components of the of this multi-effect to stand up in their own rights. The delay is actually really good. So let's say you just want to use the delay. Go, look, you know, I really like the sonic of the delay yeah. and I really like the reverb. So, you know, it's like building 10 plugins in one go. So, you know, we really threw ourselves in the deep end. We, yeah. we didn't say, let's make a nice reverb. That would have been way too easy. To yeah, way too Let's easy. build loads of plugins that all try and work together with no latency and no issues why didn't you say that at the beginning i don't know <laughs> well i think you i think you nailed it on the head I said it, you were a <laughs> what i want to do no, is so um we... flip over and actually let you show us uh, the plugin in action if that's if that's yeah, all sure. right um also everybody sure, who's sure. tuning in if you have any questions for james or mark just at beatport official and I'll be sent those questions. We'll ask those in real time. But in the meantime, let's just flip over to see Infinite in action. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, absolutely. So should we? Uh, we're going to use today. We're going to use the track that we've used for the promo video. I just we want to keep everything. So you know, some of you may have seen it, and we can show you what's actually going on on that. Um, should we kind of bypass a couple of the effects? We'll play it to you, and then yep. we'll play it back with uh, the Infinite switched on, and then explain how it's working. I think that's probably. Good yep. way. Right. So I have, um, I am using Studio One for those of you who are interested. Best, uh, best door I'm out there. I'm interested in that, James. See, Mark, I've no. been telling you for years, mate. <laughs> That's why I'm not doing the controls. Big up to Presonus there. Um, and this one here. So I've got two instances of um, Infinite on the first part of the song. I'm going to bypass both of them. And then I will switch them both both on the the first instance, which is just on the one knob side. That's uh, that's going across a, oh, a, no, a, here, we go. here that's doing a kind of delay throw. And then the other instance is on the master bus. Um, so, OK, let's play it without it on. No matter where you're from, all around the world. OK, 
game. So as you can do, there's some degree of drama there. You know, there's a bit of a white noise. There's a, there's some production, but let, let, let's up the ante here. Let, let's yeah. let's add infinite and spice things up a wee bit. Absolutely. Okay. Cool. So you've got, I and mean, there is a degree. I don't know if you, as you can see on the screen, there's a de degree of delay pr on the print of the actual um, vocal. Um, but so we're going to add one uh, infinite across that. Yeah, just to create a really interesting delay throw, and then one across the master bust. And that. then what you'll see here, Drama. just so I can explain as we're going along, for the period that I've, I've uh, just played back to you, um, there is just one line of automation which is controlling this side of it, going from zero to a hundred, um, and you'll see that on both one lot. Oh so, yeah, just to explain because obviously we take it for granted. So you've got the two instances. You've got the complex side uh, where you can see all the multi effects. Um, which uh, is on the right hand side, and then you can see the simple side, which is just purely one knob. Yeah, yeah. So we'll start with both on the simple side. There we go. All right, let's play that now. You've probably forgotten, but after all that explanation, what it sounded like before we took them off. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's play with it on Bit again. Dry. Instantly, we're bringing the drama. You know that the, the, the delay throw. When we when we solo that, you'll be, hear, be able to hear the intricacies of what the infinite is doing. You can obviously hear that um, across the master bus that you've got reverb, you've got high pass, um, all of those effects. When we go across, we'll go into into that more. But as you can see straight away, that's a fairly subtle um, preset. Um, yes. There's not look. There's not thousands and thousands of presets. If you're looking for plugging with two thousand presets, this is not it. Um, one thing we both, again, we said at the beginning of this, start having sort of a, a, a blank slate as such to start from is that we didn't want to uh, plug in with so many unusable presets that, that confuses the issue. Let's condense it into 30 or 40 really usable uh, presets that is enough for you to understand. And obviously then the flexibility to create your own. Exactly that. So let's let's jump in a bit. OK, so let's start with a delay shot, right? So if I just play that to you i'm going to bypass the the effects here bear with me one second guys okay okay so let's just play this back no matter where you're going. from all around the world it, it's just it's one unique one special five 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 Okay, so that's a really simple one that we've just done. Um, we've got the delay set to one note, so it's literally just doing a straight um, delay around the one one over one um, with the feedback set high. Um, let's switch in to the macro section because you can see in a bit more detail. This is resizable, by the way, guys. So you know. Um, just use it to obviously fit your screen. So here you can see a bit more of what I've done behind the scenes um, with this. So you've got all your four main parameters at the top here. You've got delay, reverb, crunch, and LFO. Fairly self-explanatory delay. With delay, you've got your different note uh, timings. So, you know, anything from very quick, a 64th up to, you know, two over one. So. You know that's you've got quite a large range there um and then the feedback which is obvious next is reverb um this is the mix on the reverb so how much reverb you're dialing in and then this is the the, the reverb time the decay time so you know the more you push that over to the right the longer the reverb will be on the crunch um we've got we've selected our three favorite types of uh, saturation yep. crunch so you've got bit crush transistor and tape and they all have as I'm sure you probably all know, their own kind of unique qualities um, that will create quite cool effects in your whatever you're using it for. Um, and then you've got LFO, uh, which is quite a cool effect, you know, especially if you want to kind of a delay to sound like it's ducking with the beat or or you just want to sit in the mix. Yeah, yeah. Sit, sit stuff in the mix. And again, you've got the mix of that and then you've got the, the rate of the LFO. These are all interchangeable in what order they happen um, on the plugin. The signal path comes in from left and goes to right. So the signal path will at the moment hit the delay, then the reverb, the crunch and the LFO. 
if I decided to, I could put crunch first and it would just create something slightly different. You know, every time you move these around and they're all interchangeable, you can just create a nuance, the kind of effect that you're going for. Um, on the bottom is the fixed sort of master settings. So you've got a high pass and low pass filter here with a, res a filter res resonance attached to it. So, you know, I'm sure you all know how to use that. Uh, important part and then you've got your format um, again for getting more kind of like out there with your your kind of effects you want to do you yep. dial in a bit of format width Mark and I thought was quite handy quite quite useful especially if it's used in a subtle Trend, way yeah exactly especially in the end of transitions I tend to do that a lot it's, you know just to bring the width of the mix in so you get that impact of stereo when it kicks back yeah so uh, again it just feeds into the the multi effects to, to create, you know, drama within what yeah. you're doing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, 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 you know, you can use it quite subtly and it still creates an amazing effect, you know, it just makes everything sound bigger and better when it drops in. White noise is what it says in the tin. It's uh, effects it's, yeah. that's been knocking around for a few years. I if you bought any one of my records in the yeah. last 12 years, you would have heard this white noise. It's, uh, yeah. yeah, I've used it on every record I've ever made in the last 12 years. So again, it's things that have been used in situ and not are tried and tested. So, and that, you know, what we try to do is to bottle up all of our knowledge and our experience and real, you know, and, and real time usage and condense it all into a very usable, simple plugin. Where did you find that white noise, Mark? UK. Okay, <laughs> hey guys, I got a, a couple of questions, if you don't mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, one is, how do you set the LFO destination from William Mind Readers on Twitch? How do you set the yeah, LFO oh, destination? Desti oh. What do you mean destination? Can you, can you clarify on that a bit? I'm, I'm not, not quite sure. sure. William, what do you mean by that? <laughs> clarify in at Beatport Official, and we'll try to get that answer for you. Another question is, are, are you suggesting that Infinite should live on the master channel, or does it work better on a bus? Oh, well, they, what we're trying to do here, and this is this is the ultimate dream for us, you know, that this and this in my in my startup template that I've got it across all my different buses is already loaded straight on, you know, because I know at the end of the first breakdown. I'm going to do a build up, you know, there's going to be that bit of drama. I know there's going to be one after the second build up. So it's already across, you know, my, my template arrangement. That's what we're aiming for. Blue sky thinking we would love this to be. There's no rules. No, yeah. The go-to thing you've already got preset instead of having to load it a whole bunch of, uh, of effects on your, on your buses and then do the juggling apps and obviously hammy a CPU it's all condensed in, in, into one plugin. So uh, the idea, and as I say, Blue Sky thinking for us is that it would be part of your go-to template you would have across all your buses. But then again, as I say, if you want to have it on a, um, a delay throw on something, on, on a vocal, make that, that, that non-standard, you know, anyone can put a delay on it, but it's those details, it's, you mm. know, especially from an a &R perspective, wearing my other hat. It's all of that detail I listen to in records that make records stand out. Someone, someone's being creative, taking a bit of time out to go, oh, wow, that's really interesting what they've done with that delay throw. You know, so you can use it in both instances across the channel. Um, but ultimately, we would love people to have it across all their their particular groups and then one perhaps over the master. Yeah, it's like, you know, give you an example. If you're doing a, a build, but you want the drums you know, you send the, the you know the, all the drums to one, a drum bus, and then you have the rest of your song just going to another bus, and then both those feeding into master. You could do something where maybe you filter the drums, but you don't want too much other than a filter and maybe a sixteenth note delay to get those sort of bouncing around. But the rest of everything else, you want to do a high pass and a reverb, so it just creates this kind of cool effect. But they're yeah. not all treated in the same way, you know. But my, like Mark says, you know, use it however you want to use it. I hope that. I yeah, that no, that makes perfect sense. I'm wondering if, um, how do you feel about using this in a live performance? Um, do you think that would yeah, fit that? Yeah, do you know that? what this is? A hundred percent. You know, again, it's very much influenced, or I've drawn inspiration from the, the RMX that I use a lot in my sets. Um, and who knows where this can go? You know, obviously, being our first plugin, we wanted to make sure this, you know, was fully functional and it worked seamlessly. Yeah. Then there were no bugs before we kind of elevated its potential. But very much so. There's no reason why, you know, you couldn't have an, a version of this, a hardware version, very much what Pioneer do on the RMX, which I think is brilliant, by the way. Um, a, a, a version of this 
that you could have live. You know, again, you'd have all your presets done and you could build that before you went out and play. Um, maybe that's a conversation that Pioneer, Brian, please give us a bell. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> another, yeah, first. absolutely. <laughs> another question is someone's wondering what those parameters are on the right side, as well as that graph. I'm, I'm about to get into that. I'm yes. about to get into that. So should I carry on with what I was doing? Um, <laughs> okay, so. So, uh, okay, so I was just going to talk you through this, this quite simple delay shot that we did here. So, um, we've, we've been along across all the parameters. The only one I didn't talk about was gain, which is obvious, and you can draw that in. We do have a clipper on the master, so to stop it from sending your 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 master bus over. So, it will, the, 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 the signal will be clipped, but... I actually think when you're, if you get into sort of programming your macros, um, you know, you can see here I've I've programmed the gain um, up. So let's jump into that. So firstly and fundamentally, the, the vocal is delaying. So whenever you select anything on the plugin, it will then bring that window into your macro section here. Now um, let's start from the very beginning. You switch the macro section on by clicking here, and then you switch that particular parameter on by clicking here. And then what you do is you, once you've got your mix like that, you draw in a parameter line, for example, like that. This is if you want to program your own. This yeah. is like you're not using a preset. Yeah. You know, you're, you're going, right, let's create my yeah. own bespoke uh, delay throw. Yeah. And then you can create nodes so you can, um, you can nuance how that mix is coming in or if you want you can just you know drag the lines to create sort of gentle curves up and down so if i press play you'll see that this delay mix is kicking in um over a period of time so let's just no matter fact, where i'm actually going to want that to kick in like that i'll explain to you why in a second no matter where you're from all around the world it, it's just it's one unique, one special vibe. 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 Okay, so that's a super simple one. Um, the reason I did this was because I wanted the delay to kick in fairly quickly because I want off the back of where I've drawn the automation up here, it already to be delaying. So you're hearing that delay. So the delay mix is sort of kicking in and building. And then the timing of that delay, as you can see, is the same the whole way across. You can change it so the delay time changes. Um, then I have got a high pass filter sort of working up during the duration of that automation as well. Um, and we can alter that slightly. I actually think as well, the resonance could possibly get a bit more towards the end. And when you're playing this back, you'll see a little yellow line moving across and that shows you real where time. the real time, where the one knob side is relative to all the macro you're drawing in. So if you want to nuance something and you think, oh, right here, the build, it's not quite right. It's too much or it's too little. You can just grab that point and then move it up or down and create That's another right. node. So, so, and just to explain, we're going from a preset. It's a preset, as you can see, called Kuroko. Um, and as James says, it, 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 that we've spent a lot of time working on this. They're pretty damn good, these presets. But yeah. let's say there's a part in it, as you say, James, it clashes with something else that's going on. You want to nuance it. You want to change it, make it that wee bit more bespoke. Yeah. It doesn't lock you out of the process. It allows you to get, go in and fine tune that. Um, yeah. uh, but you don't, you know, save it as a new preset. Yeah. It might be slightly better than ours, you know, fill your boots. Absolutely. Yeah, well, I, you know, absolutely. And let's say, um, for example, with this one, I just wanted to narrow the width a bit towards the end, like Mark and I were talking about. So I would select the width knob like that, turn it on. And at the moment you can see it's on full width all the way along. I'm going to drag it, but I don't want it to happen straight away. I just want it to do, go down subtly towards the end. So let's check that you out. Need one special five. You 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 need one special five. Cool. So we can get a... Let's see if we can get a. Here is one we made earlier, a bit like Blue Peter. Well, yes, exactly. Um, so here's a here's one that's way more full on. A um, lot of programming going on it. Um, let's just play it through. Uh, so you can one... Let's just trigger it from a tiny bit earlier. It's just 
It's one unique, one special vibe. It's one unique, one special vibe. It's special vibe. It's special vibe. It's vibe. It's vibe. It's vibe. It's vibe. It's vibe. So you can see there, there's a whole load of things going on. We've got a bit of um, saturation coming in with the transistor, um, sort of kicking in. I actually thought it came in a bit too quickly, so I'm going to nuance that and bring that down a tiny bit. Um, delay, we messed around with this one and we got it to stagger up yeah. and change timing. So it was speeding up as it was, uh, as the whole thing was building, which sounds pretty cool. I'll play it to you in context of the, everything else in a second. Um, resonance on the filter is going up so as you know as it's as the high pass is coming up it's getting more resonant not much format we'll put a cheeky bit of format in there i think actually um, further towards the end so gain here i've kind of brought it up and then i'm just controlling it a little bit at the end as you can see there's lfo kicking in on a 16th note which is just making it sound a bit kind of wavy kind of juddery towards the end i suppose um we have reverb building up um white noise should be i think we'll yeah i think we'll put a bit of white noise on there as well yes yeah, and to draw a curve you just you just grab and the, the we... line underneath it and pull it down yeah and it starts to curve so that um is a lot of stuff going on there um one thing you need to remember when you're programming um and this is this is quite important when it comes to the mix side of things when you're drawing in automation for mix, you want the first node to be set at zero. So, and then you can go up immediately. But what it means is when the one wheel side goes back down to zero, effectively that is switched off. So you can have a transition that when the automation goes back down to this point, nothing is on, it stops. Um, and you just remember that with your programming. So you just put a node there and then you put the next one up there. Let's have a listen to this one in context with the track. So, so there you go you, you know you could spend best part of half an hour trying to create that with a multitude of plugins or you can dial up one of the presets we've made yeah. and it's you know it's the devil in the detail with these records that make you stand out as a producer yeah. You could just put a bog standard delay on it. And of course yeah. that works. Yeah. It works. Delay works. Or you could use infinite yeah. and use something that's really more bespoke and stand out. And that's yeah. what we try to do. You know, we've not made them so ludicrous that they're not usable. They're the kind of things that, you know, and we've bottled down and refined ideas that, you know, you've had in records, I've had in records, you know, we've gone through all the projects and gone, that was a really interesting piece of production. How did we do it? Let's yeah. program that into Infinite. So, you know, th these are these are things that are genuinely be used in records and, and I know that work. So it's just the detail that it gives you and, and the speed. Yeah. Um, yeah. As, as James said, you can get heavily involved in the kind of macro aspect of it. Yeah. Or I could be on a plane going, you know, this week I'm flying from Dallas to L.A. I want to do a quick edit. You know, I've got an hour. I've got an hour and a half flight. Right. Go. You know, you want to do so. You haven't got the time to get into that level of detail. But with Infinite, all the heavy lifting, all of that is done. So I can come up with something that sounds like it's going to take me a whole day to do and bang it out in a flight. And I know that it's going to work and I know it's not going to clip and distort. Um, well, because... actually, it actually took you two years to do it, in reality. <laughs> it did take me two years. <laughs> Apart from the two years doing it, it only took me an hour and a half on the flight. So... Um, no, as I say, we've done all the half, we've done all the heavy lifting in the background, and um, you know, to, to give you opportunities whether you want to get involved and really detailed, or you just need instant um, uh, gratification. It, yeah, it's straight there for you. And and just jumping back in, I've obviously tweaked this setting slightly. I can just hit save, and then it will. I can overwrite the one that I made earlier. Um, you can do a save as, and then um, this will give you your folders, and you can create folders with your own yep. up risers, downers, whatever you call them, um, delay shots, and just start creating your own collection of you know super quick, great effects that you can then just jump into. Um, James, we had Joshua, a, another. I, I got a couple of questions, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Yeah, far away. So the um, the automation window you have there is that a set time limit, or can you adjust how long? that window less no that's not set so how this works um is this one knob 
is uh, let's say let's go to this chat track here okay that one knob is going to go from here to 100 over that duration but i could make it go from there to 100 over 32 bars, 32 60 bars, 60 60 bars. however long you want and then that is all relative to the, the to the macro section so that is effectively naught on this side and that is 100 so you can make the transition effect as short or as long as you want nice now, in a minute we're going to get into more complex breakdowns so, yeah i mean this is a, a, just over a delay shot and hopefully that's painted the picture of what it can do you know we could go through a, a thousand different presets and show you the versatility of it yeah that's for you to discover that's for you to get under the hood and, and get and, and play with it and, and get stuck in let's show you um its application and use in transitions yep. let's start with something that's Let's highlight um, a more, right yeah, a more simple um, transition, and what we yeah. do, and then let's get into some of the more bonkers stuff. Yep. I have yep. a, another okay. question. Just while we're switching it up here, is there? Of course. Of course. How do we put a release on there, or is it going to be a hard stop every time, or can we adjust and put a release on all of the different parameters by using that graph? Like you could have. Hmm, that's a good question. If you were gonna, if you were talking about a release in the sense of the reverb, the reverb release or the uh, delay line yeah, fading out, release, you could automate it so that it doesn't come crashing down to zero here and comes down to halfway and fades down, and then you can have that drawn on the macro section here. So you can, yeah, you can, you can automate it to do that. Absolutely. So it'd be more like a triangle, essentially, in the, the graph there. And then you would essentially automate 100% is 50% on the big knob. And then you could exactly. fade out. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. It's kind of it, the imagination. Your imagination is your limitation on this, really. Yeah. It's, it's you know, it will you, you can do whatever you and, and probably find stuff that Mark and I haven't even think. Well, that's it. Yeah. It. yeah, exactly. Every time I use them, oh, wow, that's cool. And, you know, I'm saving off and getting more and more presets and ideas. Yeah, hence the name Infinite. I was going to ask you what the possibilities were, Mark. <laughs> Limitless. <laughs> you guys <are> <laughs> <laughs> so next plug in is coming. Uh, There's already a plug in. <laughs> I'm afraid to say, mate. Hey. All right, scrap that. Yeah. I never liked that. <laughs> yeah, anyway. But okay let's get into the, the kind of transitional aspects of, of cool. what they can do yeah all right then so um let's play this i'm going to mute the vocal out for a second um play through uh the transition with this effect on and let's see this all right let's take it from the top As you can see, there's quite a bit of drama there. It's not completely bonkers, but there's enough to make your record have a moment in a club, you know. Mm. Um, there's quite a bit going on there. Let, let, let's let's break it down and, and, and go through what's happening in that transition. Yep. So we have got, uh, again, um, in no particular order, we've got crunch. So we've got a bit of tape saturation sort of slowly coming in just to just to make it sound a little bit more aggressive towards the end of the build there. Um, we've got delay um, on, on the mix. It's sort of going up sort of um, on an exponential curve, you know, and and it, Six, the delay is, is set to 16. Kind of snare roll type yeah. feel. It, 16 is really great for creating kind of that energy, isn't it, yep. really? So, yeah, we've got it set to 16 with a decent amount of feedback going on. So it just keeps, you know, tripping over itself. Um, gain, I've just... I've just we we just went through and kind of attuned it to what we thought was the right level before it kicked in. Yeah. Um, that's a taste thing. Um, bit of a high pass filter um, with a resonance affecting that high pass filter. And then there's a bit of reverb kicking in. I was actually just thinking it'd be quite nice to kick a bit of white noise in with that as well, actually. So I, I think we will put and there are obviously as you start to th these are all kind of graded in intensity as you as you go through we've just picked one randomly um i wonder if it'd be good to try going down with the white noise so it sounds like a try it I mean. yeah so what doing what i'm doing here is when when it kicks in it's actually the white noise is going to go down and then come back up again so just subtly but let's see how that that works 
You know, it's like it's, you're getting effects already. You're getting like a splash on the one as it breaks down, and then you're, yeah. so you're getting a white noise. So yeah. you know, it, it, it's you wouldn't even have to put any effects into the arrangement. Again, if you're if you're doing an edit and you want to be super quick, you want to you, you know you're flying out in, in a cab or you're on the way to an on an airport on a flight and you want to bang something out, you don't even have to go through that. It's literally just automation within Infinite. Yeah. It's applying all. The, it's playing all it's bringing all the drama yeah and as you can see when when i was playing it through i was i was actually adjusting that whilst it was playing i think once you get you know kind of used to plugging in and, and and how all the effects work you can just play it through and 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 tweak things up and down as it's playing and just it could be you can be super quick i mean i can program transitions pretty quickly now um and then you can take as much time as you want to just fine tune them and fine tune them until you feel like you've got your own ultimate effect for whatever you want it for that's right um, i mean because every, every track's going to react slightly differently because the the sonics involved and how they yeah, interact um, exactly. and, and how how the effects you know interact with those frequencies so you there might be the slightest amount of um adjustment within uh the presets to suit but you're again you're not locked out of that process you can yeah. go oh, i just want that to tail off a bit quicker or oh, i need just a wee bit more yeah um and it allows you the first thing to do that or go, wow that just works yeah so it, you know you've got the options you know and and I, what i find quite interesting about it and and i maybe i i just you know i as i as i touched on earlier you know um with with effects shots and stuff i love effects shots that just morph into other stuff and just are really interesting and you know you can do this and they can do it over a period of time and it, it's just very cool to be able to do that because it's like you know no one really does that much you know where you you have this delay and it starts morphing into something else and you you know it's just just cool and make you know make you stand out a bit i suppose should we go to a slightly more yeah, bonkers? Let's, to, uh... yeah, let's, let's dial in some bonkers, shall we? Let's show oh, one yeah. that, that breaks down and builds back up again to show, okay. you know, because that's a kind of more tra conventional build up. Um, okay. So let's show it, it, what it can do in terms of um, adding all the production required to break down and then build back, build back up again. Okay, so let me just find what I need here. Is this oh, a track that people them. can find somewhere or is it just built for the demo if we finished purpose. it yeah. it's about <laughs> it's about 32 bars it's about 64 bars long at the moment that's all we need Mark. Even this... it's a banger that's all we need what? 32 bars it, do you know what even the, the guy i um <laughs> i do a spinning class hit me up and said oh where can i get that track you played on instagram i thought well i better finish it in all fairness <laughs> we haven't really discussed that have we? Yeah, <laughs> no. although we have heard it 64 million yeah. times I'm anyone sorry. want to finish it for us yeah <laughs> <laughs> we should run a to you and finish this record. Yeah, exactly. It's not a bad, not a bad shout. Someone's, uh, uh, so, oh, someone's wondering what types of reverb do you have in Infinite, or is it just one type? Is it a spring reverb, plate reverb, digital, etc.? No, it, it's 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 a it's it's a kind of a whole kind yeah, of reverb, cool? I'd say. Um, we didn't want to get too specific with having a spring or a, a you know because very... it's more of a wash effect. It, yeah, you know? it's it, it, it's it's. I would if I had to draw a comparison, and I think it's a, 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 a and I think it's an absolutely brilliant reverb. Yeah, um, we, we've def we've modelled it on. Um, Valhalla. No, oh, this one we did. Um, well, somewhere between Valhalla and my brain's completely gone. Fusion. Yeah, fusion field. field. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it's it's a kind of a more washed effect. That's why it, it's a, it is a more of a whole effect as opposed to, you know, um, otherwise we're going to have to get really into the, the idea is that this is used to create drama. And in most instances of creating drama, that's the kind of reverb you choose as opposed to a spring yeah. um, or a plate or something like that. You, know, yeah. you want that enormous big room to, reverb, is it called? Indeed, to, to create, the, the, you know, that. <laughs> Big verb, big verb, big to, you verb. Know, to create nice. the, Patent that, pending. That um, that that transition, yeah. you know, that that drama, that that flip between wash and and punch. So, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. why we 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 didn't get too involved with you know various different types of uh, reverb. 
There's yeah, another question. Oh, if you go ahead. Sure. No, oh. I was going to say it's a fine balance between putting all these features in and then getting it, making it too much with like, you know, at some point we could have gone on forever saying, well, let's have all these different types of reverbs and maybe that's a discussion for the future. Who knows? You know, they might be add on, you know, yeah, exactly so... that. So you always open to ideas and suggestions. So yeah. Keep them rolling in for sure. So someone's wondering about um, the signal chain. And I think just looking yep. here, it's it's reroutable, correct? But maybe just go through that real quick if if you yeah. haven't already. Yeah it, flows from, yeah, it flows from left to right, um, as James said earlier, uh, in terms of the path. But all of it is into, on, on the top end, and it's all interchangeable. Um, so you could start with one of our presets, rearrange it, and then, mm. you know. Is it just drag and drop then? Literally just, just drag, drag and drop. Just drag the top like that, and perfect. Uh, you want to do. And and you can switch things off. So you go, well, actually, you know what? I, I don't necessarily need any. I'm just gonna say, I don't need any saturation on this. I just switch the crunch off. So right. it, again, you've got flexibility within the preset to switch. If that's too yeah. much, you're like, yeah. you know what? That's just taking it over the edge. Take that off. Or you don't want the LFO. That's all cool. You can you can remove that. But you like what the delay, and you like what the reverb and the and the filters are doing. But you just don't want the LFO. Yeah. No, no big deal. Just switch it off. And I guess to reiterate, the all of the parameters underneath this section, so filter resonance, format, high pass, low pass filter, width, uh, and wide noise, they are all across the master bus. So they they will go across everything that's above it. You know, they will affect um, you know all the signal that's flowing from left to right, and you know, and then into the master bus, into the master parameters below. Gotcha. I hope that helps. Cool. Should we crack on or have you got any more questions? Um, someone's wondering if there's an auto panner feature. Uh, not a panner. I mean, it's obviously width and there's LFO, but there's no pan per se. We played with pan, didn't we? And we ended up with width. We did, yeah. There you um, go. Just we... because we thought it, it's a more usable um, effect. Do you know what I mean? Pan very rarely can in a club you, yeah very rarely in a mono system you know very rarely is that going to translate um which just gives you that that that's a more usable aspect of that kind of element of, of effect so yeah we did we did look at that but we ended up with width didn't we yeah well i guess the the other danger especially if you're using this on a master bus and you're making a record for the clubs and you start panning stuff to the left or right, you're going to be in a whole world of pain because, um, you know, one side of the club might hear it and the other might not. I don't know if there's... Yeah, I, I've never pulled anything like that off, you know, across anything of scale. Yeah. You, know, you might be able to deal with a delay throw, but no, it's something that we didn't. Again, you know, maybe we can look at it, expanding that down the yeah. line. But let's get into uh, a more complex... Um, uh, uh, um, okay, cool. Version of the breakdown. What's well, so that breaks down and builds back up again? Cool. Well, I'm just going to play it first, flat, dry, and then and then yeah, dry, and then uh, let's kick it all in. It's all right. It's all right. Don't need plugins. It's a four. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> Let's have the plugin. <laughs> you know, another thing which was quite interesting when we were developing it is we finished all of this. We had all the features in and it was playing through and it sounded great, but the knobs weren't moving. Were they originally? We were like, oh, no, we have to have all the knobs moving because it's so good because you can see what's going on with your plugin. And you like to be able to visual. visualize. You know, yeah, yeah. That, that. Right. Let's add in. Uh, a preset that, that does a really crazy breakdown and build up. So yeah, so we've got we've got um, two presets here. We've got one across the master bus, and we've got one across the synth bus, bus that's just messing around with synth. So let's play those two together. <laughs> That's a lot of programming, you know, if you yeah. sit there and do that, it's not not doable in a conventional sense. Of course, it's not. I've done it a million times. Um, but 
that's a whole lot of production and drama and, and creativity yeah. in, in one line of automation. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's exactly. two. You've got two two plugins working in tandem there, and it's simply yeah, two exactly. lines of automation that are doing a potentially eight or more effects. Um, by using that one line of automation, right? Three, That's three, a... yeah, four, correct. Yeah, five, nice. six, yeah, seven, eight, yeah, about that. So let's play the one. Let's solo. We'll just solo the synth bus, um, and you can hear and see what it's doing here. Um, let's do that. Uh, that's a lot of stuff there. it's a lot of fangs happening. so that is yeah that's 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 full on and you can see you know there's you could hear all the kind of format going on there you could see the um you know the crunch turning up and, and, and washing just... out and come i mean these have all been distilled from ideas and and, and arrangements and things we've done yeah. in the past you know as i say that worked on uh, that worked in my records and James's records. We've opened arrangements. What did we do there? How do we reinterpret that into a yeah. preset? So, yeah. you know, these are tried and tested as opposed to just, you know, just some. And I suppose this is a good sort of example of something that you can see here with the with the low pass filter. We've started, we've brought it down, but then we've brought it back up again. So, you know, over the dura duration of this breakdown, it's not just done one thing. It's done a sort of, it's it's, it's brought it down really kind of created the kind of the tension and then brought it right back yeah, up. Yeah, washed it all out so you yeah, lose yeah. the signal and then it all comes back. Yeah. You've got the LFO winding up. You've got um, the delay timing changing. So you yeah. get that speeding up effect. You know, there's a whole world of uh, of, yeah. uh, of programming and processing going on. Yeah. I'm actually going to put a bit more white noise. From... <laughs> So I've just fine tuned. I wanted it to get a little, I thought it was dropping away when it was filtering down, the volume was dropping off slightly too much. So I've just nuanced that. So that just so, stays, yeah. you know, at a volume where you can hear what's going on. Um, so I'm just fine tuning, you know, it, it's really interesting. You you can keep tweaking and tweaking until you think up. And James would no. tweak it to where well, I would probably just yeah. go straight in and move on to the next. It's the yin and yang that are called Mark and James. <laughs> yes, I would do it to the next track by now. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly, James, you're exactly. in the you're in the more technical, advanced one, and then and Mark's just yes, using that, the knob on the front and just getting it done. I'm the one knob guy, Joshua. You know, that, the one knob was very much for me, and James wanted all his other stuff. One knob has never been enough for me, Joshua. <laughs> I've, got, I've, got, I've got this far in life with just the one knob, so I, I'm happy with that as a process. I'm going to stick with it. I think we should well, go down that route with the joke. Yeah. I've got uh, I've got more questions. We got some actually some really yeah, good questions. Um, is mm -hmm. is this the plug in zero latency? Uh, yeah. I would hope so. Yeah. because we've been very working and working and working on vigilant this. about that. Yeah. Um, and uh, yes, is the answer to okay. that. Okay. Yep. And, and, As... and, and 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 if you go ahead. No, I was going to say we've tested it on, and we've beta tested it with a lot of people. A lot of our friends have used it. You know, all the guys that are closely related to the label, they've had it for a while. We, you know, gave us some really good, interesting feedback. That's all been built in, you know, to the to the process and, and rectified as and when necessary. So we'd like to think we're as close, but you know, you never know. As I said, there's so many variations of what this can do. I'm sure we, we certainly haven't tested absolutely everything because, you, you know, we never release it, but we, we're happy. But by all means, if there's ever an issue, please let us know, you know, we'll yeah, yeah. straight on it to, to rectify it. So as yeah. as someone who does these sort of live streams with with people who develop plugins, um, the question always comes up about CPU and what it does yep. to the CPU. So can you just give us a few words on what it's doing with the CPU? Is it light on the CPU? Is it you know 
let us know what we can expect when we throw it in our DAWs. It should be incredibly light on CPU. You know, I, I'm a, I, I use so many plugins. I'm an absolute plugin nut. And, um, you know, and I also realize how debilitating it is when you have a plugin that's heavy on CPU, especially if you want to use a few instances and, and frustrating. So we've, you know, it's it's another thing that Mark and I have been really vigilant on while we've been building it. Absolutely. And that, again, that was the idea that, you know, you didn't have all of that processing. You know, you've, you'd need eight or nine, ten plugins to do what, what that's currently doing. Yeah. So let's put it this, frame it this way, is nowhere near the amount of CPU <laughs> no. required without it. Yeah. All oh, right. If you were to if you were to stack up the same, you know, individual plugins to create what we're creating here, that would that would be, be way more intense yeah, on the CPU. Fair enough. And someone else is wondering if this uh, does it support MIDI Learn. So can good I question. can we control this oh, with no. our MIDI controllers? I that's a good question. I would hope so. Yeah. And Oh, that's one thing we have done, actually. You know what? It's a very good question, and I'd be disappointed if it doesn't. Um, so I will look into that one, and if you want to stay in touch with us, we'll get back to you about yeah, that. Yeah, good we'll question. Great right question. Yeah, it's a really good go. All right. Fair and point. another question is, can you change the LFO shape? No. You mm. can change, the, you can change the, 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 the um the mix and you can change the rate unfortunately you can't change the shape so it's just a, yeah, is mind. it a sine wave it's a sine, sine wave yeah yeah, yeah. we uh, we version two? um Check indeed it out. yeah exactly <laughs> featuring spring they're all really good questions featuring midi learn spring reverb and uh shaping of the lfo yeah it's a good it's a good point and um you know definitely something we can take on board no these are great you know these are great because it, it, it's a learning thing for us you know this is the first time we'll be honest i absolutely shit myself when i put this out to put it mildly <laughs> it's like releasing your first ever record 20 years into your career um so yeah it, it was a lot of pressure and took a lot of time and you know we had we, we nearly come out with it a few times but we wanted this to be so right but it is a learning process from us we're super approachable is there anything you want to know please just get hit me up on the socials with james you know we're super down to our earth guys we want it to work for you we're here to help you as and where we can if there are any things that are not quite right or you want advice or you've got ideas you know let us know that's what that, that's absolutely really awesome these, yeah. you know these sessions are great even yeah, that yeah. midi learn you know absolutely and you know in time because we know there are going to be some incredible transitions and builders and programming you know from people that are going to be making these we're definitely going to you know be looking to make packs and that's and, right and, and run competitions for for you know the best sort of you know transitional effects and yeah everything exactly else. yeah exactly nice uh that's all the questions for the moment so if you've got more by all means great cool yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's have a look at the the. Let's see what Infinite is now doing on the master bus. Um, so you can see here, um, this one is doing crunch, bit of delay, resonance going up, gain, sort of keeping control, high pass filter, LFO, LFO rate. So the LFO rate is changing. I want to keep that like that so the lfo rate is speeding up towards the end of this uh build um reverb going up then tailing off and a bit of white noise building the whole way through so let's have a quick listen to that You can kind of hear everything that I was describing going on, you know, happening over the period of that transition. Now, um, there are t there are a ton of different combinations we've put together for this. Yeah. Um, that will give you all sorts of different, you know, risers, downers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Do you yeah, know I how many? That, look. I... Oh. <laughs> Sorry. No, of course, sorry, Joshua. No, I was just wondering if you had uh, people are wondering if you know how many presets are are that does it ship with. It, about 40 it's about 40 presets again you know what puts me off i i, I tend to find a plugin that i love and then i just get over faced with information it's like 
oh my god did i like preset 312 or was it 314 <laughs> i can't remember and then and then you go oh, i'm not going to use that because i can't remember what it, it's too complicated i've forgotten what it is yeah so the idea is to keep it simple keep it really usable you know yeah. really, not instead of making presets for the, the the sake of making a preset that no one you know with a pair of ears are ever going to use it's like these are actually you know really well refined as they distilled from real real time instance in, in records into presets that work mm. um i suppose I suppose that paints, you know, we could go on forever and ever and ever here showing you what it can do. Um, it, we've looked at it across a delay throw. We've looked at it across um, buses in terms of transition builds, breakdowns, build-ups. The only other thing it does do, um, uh, you can put it across sound um, to create effect. Um, for example, yeah. um, James, if you'd like to... Why don't you do it? I was actually going to build a little... Uh... I was going to build one more. A bit I just of a transition, but um, we can do this. We can show you. We can find something that we can put it. Across. I just think otherwise we could go on forever and ever. Yeah, I can't. True. I just want to kind of keep it condensed and to the point. Sure. Otherwise, we take. You know, you could kind of meander off into. We could go on producing drops to a blue in the face. We I also have uh, uh, James's in-depth tutorial was published on the Plugin Boutique YouTube channel today. So that was about a twenty-minute long. Yeah master class on infinite for people who are interested in a little bit more yeah great yeah so let's yeah so there's some sound shaping that you can do um with infinite as well that's another aspect of what it can do yeah exactly so you could take uh let's find a loop that we will have uh... playing 16. That kind of vibe. Yeah, we go. So we could just just put. Um, better. Uh, this is not actually your computer, is it? So not actually my computer. So I'm uh, moving my way a little bit. Okay, cool. So you can turn that up, but nothing's happening because there's no effect on it. But now if I... There's some presets as well, isn't there? With... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just doing them. This is already doing like a 16th, so... But if you wanted to do something that... And then you could duck it, maybe. So it's... That's a bit of vibe to your hats, you know. So you, you can use it in, in that way as well. And we, we, there's some presets in there that, that are for this kind of stuff, you know, just some interesting sound shapes. Not thousands and thousands, just some really, in, yeah, really usable sort of sound shaping effects. Yeah, kind of like that, just to make stuff more interesting. Or, oh. and you could I could bounce around a bit. Yeah, so you could. Yeah, you can just use it uh, as a sort of static effects processor, I suppose, on on whatever you want to use it on. Use it whatever you like, whether it's bass or hats or our entire drums bus um we've got a what have we got here so we've got another 16th hat go from here the ball of doom oh no we're all right uh sound shapers ah here we go Pop loop energy. And that's literally just adding a bit of delay and tape again. Gives it a bit of spice, have we cut through the mix a little bit, you know? So it can you go as crazy as you want. The 
depending on what kind of stuff you're doing. Yeah, and then we've we created a few more that you can use. Uh, let's go here, sound shapers. There's one for pads, which will kind of just make your pads move around a bit. Um, vocal interest, I don't even remember what that one does. Some, does something interesting yeah, to the vocal, vocal clearly. Vocal, vocal, um, uh, great on perk loops, spicy synths, and top loop energizer. So we've just put a few to get you going and then for you to start fine tuning yourselves, really. A lot of the presets here are stuff that we love and we use. Um, and from that stage, you can either just use it or fine tune it and make it your own. That's right. Yeah. So that, I guess, those, are, I suppose, are the three instances of its of its of its use, really, yeah. as a, as a, a yeah. creative delay um, mm. at, within transitions to, to create really interesting bespoke transitions that make you sound unique and stand out, and mm. then as a sound shaping tool as well. So they're the three kind of ways you can use Infinite. Um, but what, as I said earlier, what you know, my Blue Sky thing and James's Blue, that would be part of your you know your template arrangement you put across your buses you go okay look i know i've got to do that in this record this is going to happen because i'm making a dance record there needs to be some drama yeah let's you know let's have one calibrated preset that will do all the hard work for me uh, a plugin that will do all the all the hard work for me and it's exactly. already there for you as i say over the last crikey 12 months i'm going to say everything i've released has had it in all those moments have been generated using this you know because that's the best way to test it. Yeah, likewise. All right. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for coming by and giving us a, an in-depth look at the new plugin. Sounds amazing. Thanks, I love thank I love the um, the simplicity of the macro knob, obviously. I love the idea of having incredible presets to get you started or even just get you through the transition. I love the idea yep. of you, when you buy the plugin, you're getting four plugins, essentially, right? Maybe even more. For the for the price of one, you can just use one at a time, and just run it. Yeah. So I think um, all of those are really really great things to have in a plugin, and you've you've absolutely nailed it. And for your first plugin, gentlemen, well done. Thank you. As someone who Thank is you. around plugins say. all day every day, I can say that you've you've and, nailed and, it. And, and, no, no, so thanks, man. That really, means a lot. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having us on. And. Uh, to everyone out there, we'd love to know when you're using Infinite on your your, your, your track. Let us yeah. know. It'd be great to hear it in action. You got to start a, yeah, a hashtag. Get... What's the hashtag? What's hashtag in the hashtag? Infinite. Let's figure it out right now. <laughs> hashtag Infinite. <laughs> Me Hasht... up, baby. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag Infinite Mix now or something. <laughs> Whatever you want, but yeah, I mean, or just send me a DM. Just say, look, I'm using it; works really well. Send me a little video. You know, we'll repost it um, across the yeah. channel. But you know, that's hashtag Tour Room Infinite. I yeah, I think so. Um, and yeah, just just stay in touch. Let us know. Let us know it's working for you. What you can do with it. You know, what moments you've made in your records. We're intrigued to know. Wonderful. Yeah, definitely. Can't wait. To see it. And for everybody Amazing. that's uh, just tuning in, we do have a bunch of video content already on the Plug and Boutique YouTube channel, and more content on the way. If you're looking for more, again, in-depth tutorial style videos about Infinite, um, the 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 20 minute long masterclass by James was released today. So definitely go check that out if you're looking for uh, that sort of information. Uh, is there anything else you guys want to want to uh, shout out before we wrap up here? No, no I think just, we covered it. Just thanks for taking the time to tune in and uh, listen to Mark and I waffle on. Indeed, you nailed it. All right, fellas, thanks again. Uh, thanks, thanks everybody guys. who's watching. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in a bit. All the best. Have a great evening. See you. Bye.